thank Marg once again for the input we did. Do we have our third speaker? Yes, please approach. So for our third paper in this session, we have uh, Muslim Osman. Uh, he's going to be presenting about evasion attacks and defenses and smart home physical event verification. So let's uh, join me in, in, in welcoming our speaker. Thank you, thank you for the kind introduction. I'm Osgur. I'll present our paper titled Evasion Attacks and Defenses on Smart Home Physical Event Verification. In smart homes, actuators influence physical channels by executing actu uh, actuation commands. When an actuator state changes, it sends an event notification to the IoT hub to report this change. Sensors measure the physical channels and report the sensor readings to the IoT hub. So the IoT hub stores the cyber states of the devices to monitor them and uh, to activate actuators based on the IoT apps installed in the smart home. In this environment, it has been shown that there are two types of attacks. First, in event spoofing attacks, an adversary reports to the IoT app a fake event notification that did not physically occur. For instance, the adversary reports the light bulb on event to the IoT app, although the light bulb's physical state is off. Through this attack, the adversary can trigger the apps conditioned on the light bulb on event, such as the ones that would open the patio door and create an unsafe environment. Uh, the second attack is event masking, where an adversary suppresses or intercepts the notification of an event that physically occurred. For instance, the, although the alarm physically turns on, the adversary masks the notification of this uh, event to reach the IoT app. So the uh, alarm cyber state becomes off, but its physical state is on. And through this attack, the adversary can prevent the apps conditioned on the alarm on event to be triggered. To protect smart homes against such attacks, event verification systems have been uh, proposed. Uh, these systems have two main stages, uh, offline physical fingerprint extraction and online physical fingerprint checking. At the offline stage, they collect sensor and uh, actuator traces from the devices installed in a specific smart home, and then they extract physical fingerprints in the uh, form of statistical rules or machine learning models. And then at uh, runtime, when an event notification or sensor readings are received at the IoT Hub, they check these statistical rules and uh, event models to see if there is any deviation. If there is a deviation uh, from the defined rules and um, ML models, they detect spoofing and masking attacks. So let me give you an example. At the offline stage, they learn that the light bulb on event influences uh, two illuminous sensors. And then uh, at the online stage, when the adversary spoofs the light bulb on event, they check these two sensors readings. If they are measuring low, they understand that this is a spoofing attack and uh, mark this, like detect this attack. However, we uh, noticed that there are complex physical relations uh, between events and sensor readings in smartphones. Uh, first, the, uh, an event's influence on a sensor reading can be continuous or instant. For instance, uh, a light bulb on event instantly influences the luminous sensor readings, whereas a heater on event gradually increases the temperature sensor's uh, reading. Second, sensors measure the aggregated or joint influence from multiple events occurring in the environment. For instance, a sound sensor measures the accumulated joint influence from the dryer and the fan. And lastly, an event's influence on sensor readings actually de depend on the distance between that actuator uh, and the sensor, where the influence uh, decreases when the distance increases. Uh, unfortunately, our study of existing event verification systems have shown that they broadly ignore this, uh, these uh, physical, complex physical relations, making them vulnerable to evasion attacks. So we identified three uh, evasion attacks against event verification systems. Uh, first, if an event's influence 
on sensor measurement satisfies the fingerprint of another event, the adversary can conduct a spoofing attack on the event when the other event physically occurs. So uh, let me give you an example. Uh, the event verification system extracts that the TV on event influences a sound sensor and an illuminance sensor's readings. And the light on event similarly influences the illuminance sensor's readings. At runtime, when the TV on event physically occurs, the adversary spoofs the light on event. So here, since the sensor is, is measuring the influence from the TV on event, it cannot, uh, the EVS cannot detect this attack and the adversary successfully spoofs the light on event. So the, uh, at the end state, you see that the physical state of the TV is on, but the uh, light is off. But the, in the cyber states, what the IoT hub thinks is that both of these devices are on. In the second attack, if two events have uh, opposing influences with each other, the adversary can conduct a, a masking attack. For instance, the AC and the oven, uh, the AC decreases the temperature sensors readings, whereas oven increases them. So when these two events happen at the same time, they cancel out, they conceal each other's influences on uh, the temperature sensors readings. At this stage, if the adversary conducts a masking attack, uh, on both of these events, the event verification system cannot detect this since the sensor uh, is not measuring uh, anything uh, because of the concealed influence. And lastly, if two events have similar fingerprints with each other, the adversary can conduct a mask and spoof attack where uh, they mask a physically occurred event's notification and instead spoof the other event's notification. For instance, both the monitor and light influence the same illuminance sensor's readings. In the uh, runtime, when monitor on event physically occurs, the adversary intercepts this event and instead injects the uh, light on event uh, to the IoT hub. So uh, at this stage, the I IoT hub thinks that the light is turned on, the monitor is off, but in the real world, it's the uh, reverse. The EVS cannot detect this because both of these events have similar influences on the uh, illuminance sensor's readings. So, to protect IoT systems, uh, smart homes against uh, these attacks, we propose a robust fingerprinting, uh, robust physical fingerprinting system. Our system has three main stages. First, we discover the evadable physical fingerprints of the EVS. Second, we conduct software patching to prevent a subset of these attacks, but we show that software patching cannot unfortunately prevent all of the uh, evasion attacks uh, we detailed. So to prevent them, we propose sensor location patching, uh, which is a security by design approach that requires placing the sensors in a smart way to uh, ensure the physical fingerprints for each event are uh, unique. So let's uh, take a detailed look uh, at these components. So to discover uh, the evadable physical fingerprints, we check, we first check if uh, an event's fingerprint is satisfied when another event uh, is occurring in the environment. For instance, let's assume there are two events, EI and EJ, both are impacting a set of sensors. If the sensors impacted by EJ are a subset of the sensors impacted by EI, then this means that the adversary can conduct a spoofing attack when uh, spoofing attack on EJ when EI physically occurs. And uh, we also check if an, in, uh, fingerprints, if an event's fingerprint is concealed when other events occur, and check that if uh, two events have concealing influences on uh, sensor reading. So in software patching, uh, we derive new physical fingerprints to define the aggregated influences uh, from multiple events. So to give you an example, let's say E1 event influences uh, two sensors and E2 event influences three sensor readings. As you might see, the sensors influenced by E1 are a subset of E2, so uh, an adversary can conduct a spoofing attack on uh, E1 when E2 physically occurs. So to prevent this, we define a new fingerprint e the aggregate based on the 
aggregated influence of these two events. So the new fingerprint checks the aggregated influence from these events in the environment. So at runtime, when uh, two notifications are received to the IoT Hub, instead of checking their individual physical fingerprints, now the IoT Hub checks only the aggregated physical fingerprint. Since when only E1 occurs, its influence will not uh, as it will not be as high as their aggregated influence. Through this new uh, aggregated fingerprint, we detect uh, the superfing attack. However, software patching has limitations because sometimes even the aggregated influence uh, may not be enough to distinguish uh, that event from the other events. For instance, if the sensor is making Boolean type readings, even the aggregated influence or an individual influence of an event will be the same, like just only uh, sound detected uh, event. So to prevent such cases, we uh, propose sensor location patching. So sensor location patching is a security by design approach, which requires users to place sensors uh, at our identified locations to derive robust physical fingerprints uh, to to achieve this, we first construct actuator or automata. We physically model the uh, actuators in the house, and then we identify the physical requirements to ensure that each actuator's events can be uniquely distinguished through the uh, sensor readings. We represent these requirements with uh, linear temporal logic. Uh, we then conduct uh, parameter mining on the distance parameter of the uh, actuator automata to identify the specific distances from actuators to place the sensors. So this outputs a sensor placement region to detect a certain uh, actuator's events. We repeat this for all uh, actuators installed in the uh, smart home. But in some cases, a clear sensor placement region may not be identified. Uh, so for such cases, we conduct a circular grid search to identify the specific angles and distances from actuators to place the uh, sensors. After identifying the locations, uh, we add or relocate minimal number of sensors to the identified locations, and then we derive robust fingerprints that can detect uh, the evasion attacks. So we evaluated our robust fingerprinting system in uh, two uh, smart home test beds. We used two uh, state-of-the-art event verification systems to test our approach. Uh, one of them is a rule-based uh, that uses statistical rules, and the other one is a machine learning-based uh, event verification system. And uh, our evaluation showed that 71% of the physical fingerprints on average extracted by these two EVS were vulnerable to evasion attacks. And they were uh, kind of vulnerable to similar types of evasion attacks across rule-based and ML-based uh, systems. And software patching was able to prevent 52% of the evasion attacks, but was unable to prevent the others because of the indistinguishable influences from aggregated influences. And so sensor location patching was able to prevent all remaining uh, evasion attacks. So I will present a case study to give you an intuition. So in this case study, software patching uh, prevents the spoofing attack against uh, alarm on. Uh, as you might see here, the physical fingerprint extracted for alarm on says that this sound sensor must measure above 55 decibels when the alarm on event uh, occurs. However, when a fan on event occurs in our smart home testbed, this causes a similar influence on uh, sound sensors readings with the alarm on event. So at this stage, if, if the adversary spoofs the alarm on event, unfortunately the event verification systems uh, cannot detect this because the uh, sensor is measuring the fan's influence. So to prevent this, we derive uh, a new physical fingerprint based on the aggregated influence from the alarm on and fan on events. So when the fan on notification is received, now when alarm on is spoofed by the adversary, the event verification system checks for the aggregated influence from both of these events. Since fan on's individual influence cannot satisfy the uh, aggregated influence, 
now the event verification system is able to identify the spoofing ag attack against the alarm on event. So in conclusion, in this paper, we show that existing EVS are uh, vulnerable to some evasion attacks because they do not consider some complex physical uh, relations between events and sensor readings. And we propose two complementary defenses, software patching and uh, sensor location patching to prevent these attacks. Our approach builds uh, robust physical fingerprints that can uh, mitigate realistic attack vectors. Uh, thank you so much, and I'm open to any questions. Um, thank you for that nice talk. Uh, so just now you mentioned the sensor or the Asian patching, and uh, you also talked about Tanner Ulo. Uh, I did identify uh, which one did the mass locations to, uh, to to deploy items, sensors. So I'm just wondering uh, who are going to uh, do the uh, calculation, the calibration uh, to to deploy the sensors. Perhaps is it practical for a uh, normal user to do so? Uh, and another, uh, another question is, what kind of sensors are you trying to use? Like a light sensor or a SAS sensor? Uh, any remnants? Thanks. Uh, thank you so for the question. Uh, so, the question asks, uh, we assume some sensors to be added or relocated, and who is going to do this? Is this practical? Uh, so, we assume that the users or the IoT service providers will do these calibration on the sensors, lay sounds. We believe this is a uh, fair assumption because uh, users are already familiar with installing uh, assets, exchanges in their house if they are already smartphone users, or if they are getting get out from an IoT service provider, they can ask uh, those service providers to do this uh, calibration in their smart home. And for the second question, uh, in our evaluation, we consider Illuminous sound and uh, temperature sensors, but it did our approach can be extended to other types of sensors uh, as well. Right. Any other questions from the audience? Oh, uh, Max, I'll ask the question. Uh, our fourth presenter, if you're here, you may approach it and start transitioning. So my question is, uh, uh, there seems like. Uh, uh, Important assumptions that the adversary can have a with spoof uh, sensor messages and, and, and you know, inject them. So, do you think uh, uh, it's more of a question about threat model, right? That, for example, would message authentication uh, solve many of these problems, or do you assume that perhaps uh, sensor sensors could be compromised by the adversary arbitrarily? Yes, that's a good question. So, you have verification system to usually trust sensor messages because you need one trusted source to verify the correctness of the other, like the UX. Uh, to ensure that some sensors to attack detection mechanisms can be deployed that only like the trusted sensors can be used for event verification. And for the second part of the question, like the message of that patient was indeed like some cryptographic measures could prevent such attacks, but uh, smart homes are shown to be vulnerable and making such uh, cryptographic measures usually. So unfortunately, they are only to be using it.